Hi, I'm Sarah Moulton, executive chef of Gourmet Magazine. I'm here today to show you a terrific Italian recipe. It's cannelloni. Now, you may have heard of it, uh, but usually it's made with pasta. It's rolled pasta that's stuffed with something. However, today I'm going to show you a much easier version that you can make with homemade crispelli. Crispelli is nothing more than Italian crepes. Thin, thin pancake. Sometimes people get scared because they think, oh, it's French, it's difficult. It's we're doing the Italian version. It's simple. We're doing it in a blender. And there's many other ways that you can use these little pancakes. So we're going to start with our ingredients. And very simple. I hope you have a blender at home. You could use a food processor, but this is the better tool for the job. Uh, first, some water, just regular old water, two eggs. Now, we are using unbleached all-purpose flour today. I've also made this with white whole wheat flour, um, which is great because it's, it gives you a heartier uh, uh, pancake. But the only thing is if you do make it with the white whole wheat, you're going to need to add a little more liquid. We just added two-thirds of a cup of water. Um, I added an additional two tablespoons, a little bit of salt. Salt's very important. Now, this is a basic batter. I'm going to just beat it up here very quickly that you can use both for crepes, savory crepes, like dinner crepes, or I'll say crepes, crespelli, either one is the same thing, or you can make desserts out of it. So it's, it's, this is very good recipe for all sorts of things. You just blend it till it's basically done. Now, what would be great if you have the time, if you don't, don't worry about it, is to let it rest for 30 minutes, because what happens is the flour absorbs more of the liquid and the texture changes. Now, with the um, the flour that we used here today, which was the unbleached all-purpose, you see how thin this is? Can you see that? You're like, nah, that's not going to make a pancake. That's so thin. Believe me, it works. But if we use the uh, white whole wheat, you would need to add one to two tablespoons more. Okay, here we have the perfect pan for the job. This is, I'm going to just turn it down a tiny bit. This is actually a crepe pan. I'm going to pull it off for half a second while I talk about it. This is actually a crepe pan. Now, if you don't want to get a fancy pan, it's not fancy at all. This is great, by the way, for making omelets, potato pancakes, all sorts of things. But you can use any nonstick pan. And you want to heat it up with a little bit of butter in it. We're just going to use a little bit of butter. Like, let me explain. When you make pancakes at home, you know how you always lose the first one? So bear with me. We might lose the first one here. Uh, be patient. Um, but then after that, it's smooth sailing. We're going to, a little bit of butter. You could use oil here if you prefer. You can see that it's pretty hot. This is like a medium heat, and you want it to be about that hot. I like to make my pancakes using a quarter cup measure, dry measure, because that way you can put it on a plate, you can measure it easily, and you don't get pancake batter all over the top of the stove. You know how you have a gluey mess when you're making regular pancakes? So we're going to put a scant quarter cup in here, and we're going to get it into the pan quickly. I have to remember I'm left-handed here. So into the pan, swirl it around. Whoops, there we go. If you have extra, you can dump it out. If you don't want to dump it out, don't worry about it. See, I told you the first one's never perfect. See that little hole? But nobody will know anyway by the time we um, roll it up, which we're going to do. Okay, so it takes about 30 seconds on the first side. I'm going to turn it up. I said, yeah, a little over medium. Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret. Don't do what I do at home. I usually use my fingers to flip it. You can certainly use a spatula like we're going to use here. So I'll just give this one second to get a little color on it. When I went to, I went to a very fancy cooking school, which I'm very proud of, but they always said we needed white, white, white crepes or crespelli. And I like a little color. You can see this one right here. This is a finished one. It has a little nice brown on it. So I'm going to take a peek and see what we've got. No, nah, it's still not too much color. Give it another second um, and just let it heat up. You'll see it starts to bubble on top. And the reason I like the little bit of brown is it's just more appealing. Um, another thing I was taught in cooking school, which I'm going to disprove in just a second, is that you have to make these pancakes, cool them off completely, and then if you want to stack them and freeze them, which is a great thing to do, you have to put a sheet of parchment paper or wax paper in between each one. That is just completely not true. Okay, I'm going to make this. It's not going to be the perfect uh, pancake on the planet. As I said, I use my fingers. You use one of these. Uh, it takes about 20 seconds on the second side. Now, with a perfect pan like this, we probably won't need too much more butter. But the butter adds nice flavor, so if you want to add that butter flavor, you can brush it every time just a little bit. And when you're working with a regular nonstick pan, this is sort of a special crepe pan, you want to make sure you don't heat it too high, especially if there's nothing in there. All right, so we're going to let that cool off for half a second and go ahead with round two. 
I'm going to do a little brush of butter, just a tiny bit. And I'm going to move a little faster than I did the last time. Get it in there and swirl it around. There we go. Yes. Perfect. And I'm not making a mess, not yet. I don't know. I, I often find that when I'm cooking, even though supposedly I'm a professional, the kitchen's supposed to be neat, I start out with this wonderful, neat, pristine space, and I end up with a tiny postage stamp corner and a big mess all around me. All right, this is cooled for exactly, you know, a few minutes, or maybe one minute. No problem. I'm going to stack it. It's not going to stick. It just doesn't. I don't know where that myth came from. So you see how easy this is? I don't know why people get so scared about making these kind of pancakes. It's just no big deal. If you have the right kind of batter and the right kind of pan, it's a breeze. And then you take these guys. This particular recipe makes about seven of these, but you can make a whole batch. Go ahead, stack them up, wrap them in plastic wrap, wrap them in foil, put them in the freezer, and then just take out a few. They'll freeze nicely. Just take out a few, and you could make sautéed apples, roll it up uh, in there with some ice cream on top. Let's see. We don't really have very much color, but I just want to... Oops, yes, we do. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so just a few more minutes, and then we're going to move on to the filling. All right, we're making cannelloni. Cannelloni can be stuffed with ricotta and spinach. It can be stuffed with anything you want. I decided to do eggplant, which is one of my favorite things and sort of meaty, and four cheeses. Uh, I'm a cheese fan. The more cheese, the merrier. Let me just turn this off here. Okay, so here we have a lovely eggplant. This is a good old American, well, Italian American eggplant. Um, so it's the bigger guy. And I'm just going to peel it. So I'm going to, there's a couple ways you can do it. You could do it with the peeler, which is probably the most, uh, you know, efficient method, but I'm going to do it. And here we have a peeler. I peel many vegetables this way. I just take off the top and the bottom. This is how I peel oranges. And then you just go down the side. A couple things to keep in mind when you're buying an eggplant. Uh, it should be firm and shiny. Um, these kind of eggplants really should be peeled because the skin is pretty tough. But sometimes my mom gets just optimate and she doesn't. That's okay. You could use the little tiny Asian eggplants and they don't need to be peeled because the skin is so thin and that's fine. They tend to have fewer seeds. Seeds are what make eggplant bitter. All right, that's good enough. I'm just going to throw this back here. Now, we're going to slice this. See, I can't help myself. About a third of an inch, and you're going to say, what the heck is a third of an inch? Well, it's not a half, and it's not a quarter, so somewhere in between. It doesn't really matter, just as long as they get tender. And I'm going to do, this is another trick from my mom's. She used to just bake eggplants straight up. She'd make a vinaigrette and then brush both sides of the eggplant and bake it. And uh, that is terrific because eggplant absorbs oil like crazy. And if you uh, try to saute it, it will just keep sucking up all that oil and you'll end up with a greasy mess and we don't want that. All right, I'm just about there. Uh, so I'm just going to show you a few of these. I'm going to get a sheet pan. We preheated the oven to 375 and we're using extra virgin olive oil. This recipe is all about good ingredients from the ingredients that went into the pancake, good flour, fresh eggs, whole nine yards, to the olive oil we're going to brush on the, this lovely looking eggplant. It's good eggplant, not too many seeds. I'll just show you a few pieces. What you do is um, brush on both sides. Okay, and then you want to season too, salt and pepper. Like I said, you could even use a prepared vinaigrette like my mom did. Uh, and it's delicious straight up, but we're going to layer this in there to make it sort of meaty. This is a vegetarian dish. It's obviously not a vegan, vegan dish because we've got all that cheese in there, but there is no meat, no, nothing like that. All right, again, the other side, you get the idea. Not a ton. You could almost get away with none, but that wouldn't be any fun now, would it? Uh, and olive oil, besides, is good for you. They're now saying that you can have, you must have certain kinds of fat. So you'll do this with all of the eggplant. Throw it in the oven. I've got some I already did. Bake it at um, 350, excuse me, 375 for a half an hour. And I have some that we already did beforehand. Let me just show you what this looks like. And let me one of my favorite tricks, there's always two sides to a cutting board. You just want to do it till it gets tender. It doesn't really get a lot of color on it, but the knife will go through easily. And I love cooking eggplant this way. What's great about eggplant is it just it goes from being bitter and sort of nasty to being really sweet and delicious.